Thanks, Max. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out. I'm excited to share my story with you all. Um, my name is Eric Pesci. Um, and some of you might know this about me, but I saw Rubik's Cubes. Some of you might have seen me fiddling with one in class a couple times, but um, I've been cubing for eight years and I'm two time Rubik's Cube state champion. So, <laughs> today I'm going to talk about one of the things that I had to overcome which was my mental battle, what it took for me to find what would allow me to perform when it mattered most. And hopefully you can do the same, okay? Here we go. So this is where it all started. This is me, 10 years old, at my first competition. Um, I don't think I've ever been more focused in my life than this moment right here. Um, but my sister brought home a cube from school. I just remember being so fascinated by it. And I was just hooked. I couldn't figure it out on my own, that's insane. I had to look at how to do it. But once I did, I was obsessed with figuring out how I could get faster. And um, I was learning all these certain algorithms, certain tricks to help me get faster. Like buying fancy cubes that have magnets in them, stuff like that. But that's all good and dandy, but to translate that progress I was making at home into a competition was a different thing. It was another thing holding me back. And that was the mental barrier. I think we can all relate to this, you know, everything we're passionate about, but when you really want to perform at your best, sometimes there's things that in your mind that prevent you from succeeding the way you know you can. Say you're taking an econ test, you study, right? You show up at test day, go to the testing center, you sit down and you forget everything, you know? It's hard to, hard to explain or even put your finger on what exactly it is. And um, this is kind of my goal when I first started to figure out what's really holding me back. And it took me eight years to figure it out. So this brings us to last November. This is the Utah Championship. It was in three by three second round. And um, I'll give you a little background info on how a cubing round works. Everyone does five solves, okay? Your best solve is not counted in your average, and your worst solve is not counted. What that means is that if you mess up once, it's fine, it doesn't hurt you. But if you mess up twice, then it's a little iffy. And on this day, I did exactly that. I got two bad solves to start the average. I know you're probably thinking like, Eric, what are you talking about? <laughs> you gotta be kidding, you solve a cube in under 10 seconds and you're complaining? Mm -hmm. I know, okay, just take my word for it. It's a, it's, it's a bad solve for me, okay? But in this moment, I start. It's probably the worst start the average you could have. But do I give up or I make the best of what I got left? I mean, if I gave up, I wouldn't be telling this story right now. But <laughs> um, I was like, you know what? Three stalls left. Let's see what I can do. So the first thing is at home, when it was just me and my cube, right? I was getting good times. I was the only one watching, no one was there. But I had proven to myself that I could perform and get good times. There's no difference when you go in front of, when you go on the stage and compete in front of a bunch of people. If you can prove to yourself that you can succeed, you can do it again and again and again in front of other people. And that's what I was thinking about here. I was like, at home, I've solved it faster. I can get good times. I was like, why not do it now? So I have the video, hopefully it plays. Okay, so this is the third solve. <laughs> That was 6.537. So not too bad, okay? I started with two bad ones, redeemed myself on that third. But if I wanted to break the state record at the time, which was 7.79 average, I needed another six. But the thing is, at this point in time, no one in Utah, or no one in Utah had ever gotten two sixes in a row, let alone in the same average. It just hadn't been done before. But I was like, you know what? Someone's gonna be the first. Why not me? In life, there's things, there's barriers. Someone's gonna be the first to do something. What's stopping you from being that person, right? I mean, anybody can be the person to push the limits or redefine what's possible or what people think is possible, right? So I was thinking about this, I was like, I got one six, let's do it again, right? And here's the second. 
Sorry, that one was a 6.55. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a difference with this song. This one had a PLL skip, what we call it, where one in every 72 solves, you don't have to do the last step. It saved me about a second, right? I got lucky, okay? But that doesn't mean it was a fluke. I feel like in life we have the tendency to kind of diminish our own accomplishments and just say, yeah, I got lucky that day. Or, you know, I was just, I don't deserve it or whatever. We need to stop doing that. We give, give ourselves more credit for what we accomplished, right? And at this moment I was like, you know, I got lucky, but it's how I dealt with it. I mean, people get lucky, people get unlucky, but it's how you handle that luck and take advantage of it that really counts, right? So heading into this final solve, I've done four. Everything mattered on this last solve. Because of the nine and the eight, if I got another bad one, be toast, be over with. But if I got my best solve, it'd be a state record by like almost a second. Okay, huge, huge potential here. And people saw I got two sixes. People ran from across the room to see my final solve. There's like a hundred people in front of me, people behind me watching. I was freaking out. My hand, and you'll see in the video in a sec, my hands are sweating. I was wiping on my hoodie trying not to, you know, because it would be slipping if I kept it on there. But instead of considering this moment, what's the worst possible time I could have gotten to still break the record? I was like, you know what? Might as well just get my best solve of the average right here. Even after getting two sixes in a row, never been done before. Getting the worst outcome never crossed my mind. I didn't allow it to. And then... Yeah, the rest is history. You can see people behind me. In a comp, you get 15 seconds to look at it, so I'll show you here. You see me wiping my hands on my hoodie. Yeah. 6.47. Hey, don't worry. Let's go! because the reaction was incredible. Everyone like went nuts in the building, but um, <laughs> the cube was off like this, don't worry, it's still solved. As long as it's not over 45 degrees, it still counts. But I would have been so mad if it was off by just a little bit more. But that left me with a 7.08 Utah record average, getting my best solve on the last one. I know for a fact, those eight years prior, without thinking about the things that I did, I would have choked it. I know I would have choked it. And uh, to pull that out was, it was, it was a breakthrough for me. And at the time, this put me at, in the top 100 in the country, which is just unreal. To think about like the, the kid before, just like, at his first comp, just addicted, trying to get faster. But this never would have happened if I didn't believe in myself. And I know like every motivational speech ever just says, oh yeah, believe in yourself. It's overdone, right? But it's overdone for a reason. And those four things I shared, you know, proving it to yourself, it wasn't a fluke, um, you know, never think about the negative and being the first to do something. It's all just, all of them are the same, believing in yourself. And that was the only difference between this performance and all the failures I had up to this point. And uh, I've been able to translate this into other parts of my life, you know, and I think you can too. Whether you're taking a test or you're at work, you're under pressure, things on the line. You can do what it takes and you gotta figure out what What's holding you back from performing when it matters most in your life, okay? And uh, oh, this is just a funny photo of me and some friends I met, but you know, it's uh, eight years solving this puzzle, but the real puzzle I was solving was how to fix my mental battle, right? I think you could do the same. That's all I have for you. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, have a great night.